Okay, here we have the two headlights. New one on the left, old one on the right. I've already done the conversion, but I'm going to show you uh, show you what I did to achieve it. Uh, first thing that you need to do is remove the bales uh, on the original headlight, and they just snap off. It's easiest with a screwdriver. With those bales loose, this cover will come off, keeping in mind that you won't be able to fully remove it because you've got a wiring harness going through it from your ballast. So your ballast attaches to the bottom of the uh, headlamp. The new eBay headlight has a, a slot in the bottom, just like the original. And the only thing I found was the original screw that fit the original housing it was a little loose in the new um, Taiwan version and I used a slightly larger screw. I went from a metric screw up to a number 10 self-tapping screw and that, that tightened it right up. That was me being just picky. Okay, your new headlight comes with a manual uh, lock where the headlight height adjusting motor would go. And it looks like this. And that basically is a bayonet mount, three, three pronged bayonet mount. Twists about a quarter of a turn and it will pop out. In that position, this is where the old headlight motor was we're going to install the OEM headlight motor and I will remove this one show you the pieces that you need to be looking for and how to properly install them uh, the first part is and I've already started you need to remove the two torque screws from the motor that holds it to this mounting collar and uh, that's that's you know real simple take those two screws out and the motor will uh, remove from the collar. Okay, here we have the three key components for the motor and the mount as removed from the OEM headlight. Now, when you remove the motor, the two screws that hold the motor to the mount, there's those two screw holes there, the motor has a little socket right there, almost like a hip socket if you will. And you need to slide the motor sideways out of that. What it looks like when it's all assembled, if you had x-ray vision, would be that extension, which is about an inch and a quarter long. You must have this piece, you have to have that piece to make the socket now that much longer so that when this is all screwed together, it protrudes through and this is what it actually came out of on the original. It's a actual friction socket. Very secure on the original. On the aftermarket, it's not quite as good, but it does work. It's a track, and it basically slides into that track through the hole. I'm doing it from the side right now. That track, it, for my... Um, feeling was a little loose. I think you could put a dab of silicone rubber on it to hold it to make sure it didn't flop out. I chose um, to put a zip tie around it. When I get to that stage I'll show you how that works. So this is what this looks like with the extension installed and this basically moves in and out you can actually see I'm moving the headlight. That's how the motors move the headlights. It's pretty slick. And the only thing I'm going to do differently is I am going to add a zip tie down here around the white nylon just to secure it so that there's no way that that ball can slide out of that track. I don't know if it possibly would, but with a zip tie around it, not going to fall out. Okay, a little tricky to see but now 
there is a zip tie wrapped around the white section of the new headlight that this ball slides into. It's kind of a side view of it. You can see my zip tie. I've just wrapped it around and it's just acting as a keeper so that that extension, this cannot fall out now. And the second thing I found that I modified slightly is there's a rubber seal. Uh, it's not used for the purposes of a, as a seal, it's used as purposes of friction to keep this locked into position. I found that the one that was on the original um, you mated with the new headlight made it too tight and I found that the new one made it too loose. So what I did is I added a small o-ring underneath it, a very thin uh, 16th inch wall o-ring just to bulk it up a little bit. You may or may not feel that's necessary but it it made it lock into position uh, nice and tight. It feels very secure and with the mount now installed you can see down in the bottom where our cup is that the uh, the ball from the motor needs to go to. And the trick uh, to get that in is to pull the headlight back. Basically, the, again, the headlight moves in the housing. So when you pull the headlight back, you've got some room and you can slide the ball in and into place. And you'll know that it's locked in place when you have it all done because the headlight will become static and, and it will not move. Okay, here you can see it slid into place. That's what it should look like. And now you just drop the motor in place. Put your two Torx screws back in. And again, you can get an idea. I can move the headlight and you can see the motor flop out because the motor is connected to the headlight at this point. That motor basically is just a jack screw. It runs in and out and that's how it adjusts the, uh, the headlight up and down. I'll go ahead and put the torque screws in and then we'll talk about wiring. Okay, we've got the motor installed at this point and the headlight no longer wobbles up and down and this is all tight and and it's, it's great. It works real nice. Uh, the new headlight bucket comes with the wire already installed four pin. I understand that there are two versions of this motor and connector. This headlight bucket is the four pin style. If you have a different style then you're going to have to change your wiring over from your original headlight. Uh, which would be doable. You could do that. But this headlight is already set up with the wiring. The only thing that I changed about the wiring is I added some zip ties. It was kind of a rat's nest. Every wire going every which way. I just zip tied it to kind of hold it uh, you know, in place so that we didn't get wire fatigue over the years. And then this connector just plugs right in. Just like that. Another tip um, I mentioned I changed the halo lighting from the wedge type incandescent. They're mini wedge lamps is what they are. These blue and black wires uh, and their associated sockets are what hold the, uh, the lamps. And I thought that cool white halos looked cooler so I pulled all these guys out. The retainers that hold the sockets into the headlamp assembly behind the halos are not real solid. So I added a dab of uh, contact cement to each one as I slid them in place just to make sure that it wouldn't come apart. There are a total of eight LEDs, uh, one uh, a set of four for each headlamp, one for the high beams, one for the low beams, a total of, a total of eight. And if you do replace them with LEDs, you'll want to be sure that you uh, note the polarity because polarity on LEDs is important, of course, and 
they will not light up if you put them in backwards. So um, <laughs> what I did to confirm polarity was I actually powered up the headlamp on the bench and test fit each LED to make sure that I was uh, installing them correctly so that they all lit uh, because the LEDs themselves are not marked once they're in the you know socket. Anyway, um, that's what it looks like. This is what the ballast looks like installed uh, with the OEM bracket. And all this wiring right here came with the new housing and is wired through a grommet right here and into the inside and then back out to this socket. But basically all the wiring is there. All you need to do is just change over your pieces. You need to change over your ballast and change over your motor. Um, and put it back together. Another noteworthy um, thing I should mention, the HID lamp is the same as the OEM, meaning it's the, you know, it's the same mount, same connector, they're interchangeable. That's the low beam. The high beam is an incandescent or a halogen, and they are different. The new lamp uses an H7 mount, and the original is, I don't remember H5 or what it is, but it's H9 actually is what it is. And it's, it's a bayonet type mount. They are not compatible. It doesn't matter in the sense that the new lamp comes with the new H7 lamp. It only mattered in my case because I'm going to use this as an opportunity to upgrade the high beams to an LED uh, type lamp uh, in the same color temperature as my HID low beam. So if you do decide to do something like that, you want to make sure that you get the H7 style of lamp. Okay, I've gone ahead and installed the uh, LED lamp, and as if there wasn't enough wires in the housing already, we uh, of course added because we've got the LED driver. There's a nice flat spot uh, opposite side of the plastic as the HID ballast. So the LED driver power supply is double sided taped. That's the bottom of the headlight on the inside. And then I just tried to route the wires where they wouldn't interfere with the movement of the, the headlight and put as much um, you know, kind of there's about a foot of extra wire between the adapters and so I came over and down and kind of wrapped around and zip tied and in place so that nothing would interfere. And the last thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and put the cover back on. You've got to connect your HID lamp. This again is something that you'll be switching over from the uh, old uh, cover. And that black plastic plug that the wire comes through because you do reuse your old ballast. And it's, it's real self-explanatory. Anyway, you connect that up and pop your cover on. Okay, here's the whole thing, all assembled, bales in place and latched, and ready to go back in the car. Yeah, it looks real nice. Looks even nicer when it's on. We'll see what that looks like.